Breaker here with Roswell Flight Test Crew. Sitting next to me, I have Chad Novak, also known as Final Glide. He's in between races and he's going to sit down with us, talk to us a little bit. Welcome. How you doing? Thanks for having me. No problem. So, is this your, tell, tell us a little bit about your background. How'd you get into FPV racing? Oh, uh, look, I'm, I, I like to call myself a uh, hardcore aviation tragic. Uh, I remember four years old seeing aircraft flying over the top of my head and um, just being fascinated with it. And as a young kid, uh, my parents got me into RC planes and I've been, play I've been flying RC planes on and off for about 25 years since I've been uh, quite a young kid. Started in control line, then got into remote control. Um, and probably about 14 years ago, I gave the RC hobby away and started flying full-size aircraft. So I got into sailplanes, which I still do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, really, really enjoyed that. Um, and probably about two years ago, uh, one of my sons was getting a bit older, so I decided let's get back in the RC hobby. I took him to a, a model aircraft show, and he absolutely loved it. And I thought, well, this is a good excuse for Dad to buy himself some RC gear. So got back into it and flew RC gliders and various things on and off. And around December 13, I stumbled across a flight test uh, uh, video on YouTube, and they were flying a Batbone tricopter through... Uh, an abandoned warehouse via FPV, and it just totally blew me away. And I just, wow, that is just great. So I straight away ordered a Batbone, took a while to get to um, to my house, and took me about a month to put it together and learn how to fly it, and I learned line of sight quadcopter flying. Chad, I'm going to interrupt you a sec. We've got a race coming okay. up. We're going to switch over to our live feed from the course. Okay, well... Who we got first? I don't know who we're looking at, but we have. We're looking at car three, which is Josh Tui. Okay, on Josh Tui. Live FPV feed. Okay, he's got a pretty good speed on him there. One thing I noticed: a lot of people um, got to be very careful about how they tune. You see how the quad is very, very twitchy. That that really can't see. He's he's really struggling there. He's pushing um, that aircraft to the limits. Uh, yeah. It looks like. A big part of flying fast is tuning the aircraft to fly smoothly. Um, and people say, oh, how do you fly, how do you fly so well sometimes? And I don't think I'd always fly so well, but a big part of it's tuning. Uh, getting the aircraft set up, uh, only a small part of it's actually how the pilot flies it. If the aircraft flies the way you want it to fly, it's so much easier. Uh, and I'm a, I'm a very picky pilot at tuning, but I mean, that said, he's doing a pretty good job there. He's he's keeping it between yeah. the lines really well for how responsive yeah. that aircraft is. All right, so Josh is in the lead. Also in this race, we have Joshua Moore, Paul Bauer, the LED man, Angela, and Sistuis. They're all doing a pretty good job. I mean, it's a it's quite a um, it's quite a fast uh, little track and quite flowing. Uh, and if you get the lines right, you can just you can just flow through it. But if you get lost or you uh, get a little bit wide, you'll you'll get taken out by those flags, or you'll miss a you'll miss a um, you miss a gate. So you, you you you've got to be very careful about how you take it. We were talking about that earlier. Those flags, I'm sure, make it easier to tell where the course is, where you're supposed to be. But they're also obstacles. They're, yes, they're yeah. dangerous. Uh, yesterday, I got taken out by a flag. I I got a fair bit of. Um, bad uh, video. I uh, only had it for about one second, got total white snow for one second, and uh, before I knew it, I hit one of those flags. So you really can't run wide. I, I think it's it's important to not push too hard. Most of my races, I've just been running at 75%, and you end up getting a, a fast lap. You don't get anything if you crash. So, so Josh has just finished his five laps with a Best time of 24 seconds. Lovely. What was his um, total lap? So 210 yep. total time. 210. That's not too bad. For five laps. Yes. I think it's it's a matter of the the, the first heats to just bank bank a nice nice consistent uh, race. A little victory victory roll there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's having fun. Yeah. And be nice and relaxed. He didn't crash. I'm sure, as we all are. That's a that's a really good run from Josh. All right, so 
We were talking a little bit about how you got into the sport. Why don't you show us your aircraft that you're flying today? Okay, um, this is uh, my aircraft that I'm flying uh, at the comp. I've actually got two different versions. This is my racing uh, version. I've got a, a five inch frame, which I'm gonna be using in the freestyle comp. Um, I've always flown, uh, personally flown blackouts uh, yeah. since I started. Really enjoyed the, uh, the flying. But I, I've got a friend um, known as Soma on RC Groups, and he, um, he makes the warp quad. Part of the warp quad. Uh, a lot of people yeah. know the warp quad, line of sight. I did a lot of line of sight flying before I did yeah. FPV and became really good friends with Soma. And the warp quad is an amazing quad. And for about eight, now, eight months now, I've been annoying him every single day going, Dude, when are you going to actually get into the FPV market? And two weeks before the national started, he gave me a frame. And I said, dude, don't do this to me. But I flew the frame, and it was that well balanced and that, that good flying and suited me so well that I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a risk, and I'm going to change to this frame. So I literally, most of my frames, I only had them built and a rough tune a couple of days before I flew out. So it was a big risk for me, but it seems to be paying off. And so this, this, is, uh, this is a warp quad product? Pretty much, yeah. Um, it's called the Alien. Um, these are still prototypes. They'll be available right. at, in about six weeks from uh, impulserc.com. Uh, so warpquad.com will is going to become Impulse RC at uh, some point in time down the track. Okay. Uh, they're just sort of broadening their horizons. Yeah. And, um, yeah, as you can see, it's got... Uh, it's it's, it's got, got some design it's, features that are reminiscent it, of, uh, of... If you know a warp Soma's quad, then, uh, yeah, you, you know you know this thing. It's it going with the X-quad uh, yep. shape, and it's extremely well balanced. So all of the, all of the mass is in the center. In the center so right. the big difference I noticed with this over a standard H-quad is your pitch feels identical to your roll. Right. And a lot of people can uh, tune their uh, roll so it's very nice, but it's very hard to tune pitch because there's a lot of uh, weight out on the extremities. Right. This, the pitch feels just like the roll. Oh, so that's it's, interesting. It's, it gives you a lot more confidence to fly the aircraft. Sure. So let's talk about your electronics a little bit. Okay, so um, I'm running um, Cobra 2204 1960 KV motors. Okay. Um, and uh, HQ carbon blend uh, 6 by 4.5 props. Uh, that's my go-to uh, setup for a um, for a six-inch area. I'm using the six-inch because it's not as twitchy out on the course. Um, okay. It's not quite as fast as my five-inch setup, but you don't need fast out there. You just need smooth flowing, sure. so that's why I'm using it. Um, using my uh, trusty KISS 18 amp uh, ESCs on there. I'd prefer to use KISS 30 amps, but I've only got one set of them. So um, right, we should mention you're the you're you're Felix's go-to beta tester for those those 30 yeah, amps. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky enough that uh, uh, Felix sent me out a set of them, and I absolutely love them. They're absolutely bulletproof, so they're gonna they're gonna do well when they go on sale. Do you so. have any inside info for us on when those are gonna become available? He's been. He's been kind of in the dark, keeping the keeping us in the dark on that for a little while now. Uh, they're actually in production now. Okay. So, last time I heard, uh, late this month, early next month. That's great news. But there's they don't know how long it's going to take to get certain components, so it sure. might it might take out. But for those people that are asking, they're being made. And, so yeah. And given the success of the 18 amps and uh, uh, some of the he had he had so much trouble with filling demand, meeting yes. demand for that yeah. product. He's probably making sure he's got all the I's dotted and the T's crossed on, his, on yes. his manufacturing yeah. side. Yeah, That's great. So, um, flight yeah. controller? Uh, flight controller is another um, uh, prototype flight controller. It's uh, this one in here. I'm using two different ones uh, testing out. My 5-inch has actually got a um, uh, an SP Racing F3 acro board from Dominic yeah. uh, running uh, Mr. Clean Flight. And uh, this one is actually a, uh, a Tornado F3. So it's, uh, it's made by a guy on RC Groups called uh, Moto Moto, and he makes the Moto Wii for the, uh, for the warp quad. Okay. And he's making a, his own version of a, an acro board. All right, we've got another race getting started here. We we've now. switched over to the live camera. Who have we got here? So it looks like in this, in this race we're following... Uh, car number seven, who is uh, El Francois. Okay. Also in this race, we have Strepto, Sean Harlan, Hefte, Anthony RC, Fat oh. Kid Joey, oh. and Brian Hanley. I think he's down. El Francois is down. We're going to switch channels as soon as we have a chance who here. Who we got now? We're following channel number eight, which is... I only see... I only oh, see that's Strepto. Number... 
That's Strepto. my good mate Strepto. We flew out together. So, right, I'm very interested to see how, how Mark goes. Nice and smooth. I call him, I, I call uh, Mark Mr. Consistent. He doesn't fly stupidly fast, but he finishes. Yeah, this and is you can important. see here, you can see he's nice and smooth. He's really smooth, especially compared to the last race we yeah, watched. Exactly, yeah. Smoothness is with, the key. With Josh, yeah, this is a big... <laughs> he's flying big, really well, actually. He's probably nice mad contrast. at me because I should, I should be spotting for him right now. <laughs> go, Mark, go, go, Mark, go, go. We are spotting him right now. We're, That's we're true, yeah. For him. Okay, you're on lap number three, Mark. You're doing well. Keep it smooth, keep it smooth. Now, I'm really impressed with how Mark's been flying. He, um, he wasn't always uh, a, a really fast pilot, but in the last couple of months, he's actually put a lot of effort in. We used to call him Captain Slow, but... We've changed that now. I've now called him. He's now known as Captain Average. So, uh, so he's, he's picked <laughs> he's up, up speed he's a little upgraded. bit. Yeah. He's upgraded. So is he flying a similar setup to what you have here? Uh, no, he's flying a Vortex. Okay. Um, so, um, both Mark and I have uh, come out very much to the thanks of Immersion RC and Fat Shark. Um, they were kind enough to help sponsor us come out here because we couldn't afford to come out here on our own because yeah, we're all the way from Australia. So I was going to say your accent is uh, is yeah. for, for for those of you who don't know you, you're uh, I'm you're a crazy from the other side of the world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, big props to uh, Immersion RC and uh, Fat Shark from me personally because uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. So he's doing quite well there. I think that's his last lap. Yep, he's happy. You can always tell when they're happy and relaxed because you see a little bit of a flip and a roll. And it looks like Strepto has won the race. He's uh, he's in position one. Lovely. He's done well. At the end of the and race. He's got a pretty good time too. He'd be happy with that. 2.13. With a, with a best lap of 24 points. 24. 24. I mean, to, if you can uh, continue on with a 24 consistent lap, then you're going to do pretty good. You're going to be inside the top third of the field. Yeah. So he's got to be pretty happy with that. That's great. Yeah. There they are congratulating. I think you always got to be happy with first. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to be too upset with that. Yeah. yeah. So we're actually going quite well. We're uh, knocking through the races pretty quickly today, which is good to see. Yeah, we've had, we've had three days now to get this figured out. Yep. And I'm sure all the organizers don't have much sleep because I don't have much sleep. It's been, it's been a wild ride. And, and I think there's got to be a shout out to everyone here. Uh, I've, I've met all these people that I consider on friends, friends online, but I've never actually met them. Right. Uh, and it's been an honor to fly with all these guys that uh, I consider people that I idolize uh, and that have um, helped sort of form my flying style. And sure. it's great to see that they're just really great guys and, and really enjoyed it. And everyone else that's uh, put any kind of effort in here, it's, it's really been a blast. Uh, it's, the week just hasn't stopped. I've been living on about three hours sleep every single night. When did you arrive? I arrived last Saturday. It was okay. a 25, uh, the trip took 25 hours. Yeah. And I think in total it was like 32 or 35 hours uh, uh, straight without sleep for Mark and I because we didn't sleep on the plane. Don't sleep while on planes. And, and of course being typical uh, quad uh, uh, FPV addicts, the first thing we did when we got here was we picked up the quads and we went for a walk and we found somewhere to fly for a couple of batches before we went to sleep. So, uh, you know you're a tragic when you do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's I think great. You got your priorities straight, yeah. that's for sure. The only sad thing is uh, on Saturday we've got to go home. So, um, But look, it's been, it's been a wonderful trip here and we really do feel lucky uh, that we uh, have given the opportunity to come out here and, uh, and can't wait to come back. Can't wait to have any any of the guys come out uh, to our hometown of, of Brisbane, Australia. Yeah, you guys need to uh, or organize something out there. Give us an excuse to fly fly Don't down worry, there. It's it's coming. There's a couple of big things happening in the pipe work. That's great. It's winter over there in Australia at the moment, so uh, we're happy with this hot weather. Well, it's, it's it's something a bit different for us. Bris Vegas has some pretty nice weather most yes, year yep. round. Yep. So look. Keep, keep your ear close to the pipe work because there's things that are happening. Um, we've got uh, Chris Ballard from uh, Quarop.com. He's organized, trying to organize a, uh, a national racing league uh, over in uh, Australia. Uh, we've already, they've already run some uh, state championships in Victoria and Tasmania, and we're going to be running state championships soon in Queensland as well. And um, 
we've got an Australia versus New Zealand um, <laughs> race. So the, the Aussies versus the Kiwis, that's happening in December. Uh, that, that's going to um, be some fun, so, friendly competition. Um, at this stage, uh, I think I'm on the team. I might not actually be in the country at the time, but I'm hoping I can make that because there's, there's already a lot of smack talk going oh, on there, sure. lots of, lots of sheep jokes imagine. going around, and uh, we're, we're, having, we're having a good fun. So, so that's going to be happening on, in, on the Gold Coast um, in December sometime. So okay. looking well, forward keep, to that one. Keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a nice, nice chance to f to fly down while it's winter here and and and, yeah, and the we nice weather down in, in we'll Australia. We'll be like we'll be the the FPV pilot version of the sur uh, the surface of the world, just following the summers right, all the around sun. the world. That's yeah. my dream. It'll never happen, but that's my dream. Well, you're getting there. Yeah. All right, so, well, it was great talking with you, Chad. No worries. Thank you very much. All right, good luck out there, and uh, we'll keep an eye on you while while you're racing. No worries. I just got to hope that I don't crash from here on out. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.